وصف الأنين بداخل كم مرة قد ذاق قلبي من أسى محلته وكم كرهت مصابها لكن رأيت الخير يسكب في أنا كم مرة قد ضقت من عظم البلاء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's been over a year since I had a back and forth with spubs exclusively with spubs in relation to a certain matter and we know what this is about so there's no need to sort of recap and go over old ground but over a period of a year many other individuals who are safe sex subscribers felt the need to get involved so Dawaman got involved and then Mo Sheikh got involved and then another graduate from Medina got involved by the name of Abu Salma something Adid or uh, Muhammad Adid sorry and now another person has decided to make himself known or heard in this particular issue so they don't, can't let it go when I mentioned I think in my previous video, the video before that, I said that Khuruj to the Madakhila and the Super Salafis and the Neo Salafis, it's similar to the Holy Grail. So if someone tries to dispute or to tackle or to academically have a discussion about Khuruj or rulers or anything that's in between, all the minions will unite no matter how much differences they have and we have been presenting our evidences and our position with classical scholars with the abundance of uh, or plethora of evidences and references and sources that we've been providing over the past year it still hasn't been uh, accepted or ha it hasn't been accepted by the other party now today we are addressing an individual by the name of Abu Hafsa Sofiani or Sofiani I Apologize for mispronouncing his name. Now, like with the master graduate, I was tagged into his uh, video or YouTube video. And likewise, with this particular individual, Abu Hafsa Sofiani from the Cricklewood Islamic Bookshop, they tagged me into this audio or this SoundCloud. I had to listen to it. They actually were kind enough and generous enough to put a timestamp as to when they spoke about myself and others. Uh, well, the others... You know, the brothers that they spoke about, you know, they, they, they're old enough to, to handle their own issues with them if they want to address them. Whereas with me, after listening to what they said and what his arguments were, you know, it, it was just another case of deja vu. It's like, OK, the next one and then the one after that. Because their presentation is based on the rhetoric that they've been spewing for over 20 years. And we've now got so much evidences to counter that. And then when you listen to the technicalities, you think, okay, I could tie this in because he's mis misquoted this. It's consistent. It's very consistent. Now, in the past, most notably recently, I have been very, very disrespectful and rude. And I have been very, very childish. And I could admit my mistakes and I've apologized publicly uh, for my mistakes. And I asked you to forgive me and those who are slandered and insulted and disrespected, I asked them to uh, to forgive me as well. Now this individual in question, Abu Hafsa Sofiani, after listening to his audio, and I'm going to play certain clips for you before I get to the video in question, very loud, very aggressive, insulting, you know, with using, you know, words like you stupid, you idiot, etc, etc. So I have been guilty in clapping back or responding back or taking a similar approach you know you speak to me like this i'll speak to you in the same way and i have to be the bigger man and accept that we are ambassadors we need to educate and we will take an approach which is respectable academic and to the point i don't need to get emotionally involved because my evidences speak for themselves so before i start the whole refutation Let's just listen to his attitude and his and his behavior and his tone. Just have a listen. When I earned this book, your mom was going to put you in nappies. You're not going to teach you the books now. So there you go. There's a taster for you. There's a teaser for you. 
uh, about the individual who I'm responding to. So he said that, you know, talking about you, you and your mother's nappy, you ahmak, you stupid, you jahid, you ignorant. So you see, you know, just this typical super Salafi, safe sex subscriber, he can talk to you how he wants, in whatever manner he wants, in whatever tone he wants. And, you know, that's just their rhetoric for the past 20 years. You know, that's, that's been their forte for however long they've been in existence. And I'm not going to respond in kind. I'm just going to let my uh, academic references do the talking. Now that, the clip that I just played for you, that rant wasn't directed at me. That rant was directed at Yasser Qadi. But he mentions me as well, along with others. So let's just show you where he mentions me so you understand why I'm responding to him. Me on the internet. The like of Yasser Qadi uh, and Majnoon, I call him Majnoon, and I am, I am responsible for what I say. Or Muhammad Hijab and Ali Da'wan, whatever the names is, whether it's Haji, Bruhaji. Wallahi, Ikhwan, they take it from me. They, they are kids. They are kids who are fighting for their own reputation and fighting, عفان الله وياكم, just, you know, for the sake of. Me, 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 for whatever reason. The group of liars, they attacking our brothers, for instance, in SP. Uh, they are attacking the shuyukh. And all that statement, all that says is based on lie. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Jazakumullah khair. We are upon the Salafi and Hasibuna kadhalik. Wallahu hasibuna. And all the brothers who are doing this fight for the sake of Allah, it feels like 72 seconds in just one second. I remember when I was your age, this is what I used to say to myself. When the Ikhwani get together with the Hizbi, with the, with the Qutbi, with the Diobandi, with all sorts of people, they all hate one group, which is us. When they, when they do so, hey Ikhwan, it means, Walillahi alhamdi upon the haq. So you heard, he mentioned myself along with others. And then he said, we're liars and we're kids and it's all about our reputation and it's about me, 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 me. So he mentioned something interesting. He said, they're attacking our brothers in SP. So he's done about spobs. So I'm sure you're part of the neo Haddadiyya. You're not part of spobs from what I've been told. And also what's been addressed to me is that you're in your early 50s. Or in your mid 50s. So, my brother, this isn't appropriate language to use. One, you're being disrespectful by talking about other people's mothers. And secondly, you're insulting us or accusing us of being liars. And it's all about reputation and me, 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 me. This is not befitting behavior for a 50 year old man. Or if not, your mid 50s. So, as your younger brother, sincere advice, because I've been guilty in the past and I've been very crude and rude and, you know, I've bit back when I shouldn't have. And I've mentioned that before and I don't want to keep going over this, but you need to really self-reflect because this behavior is unacceptable to address us in this manner. But you are part of the safe sect. You're a card carrying member, so you can get away with it. You know, we're a little bit as well. Everything you say is justified, isn't it? You're going to twist and, and, and tweak all these texts and justify it. So there's no point, is there? There's no point even trying to be, um, trying to give you this nasiha, al-deen al-nasiha. You know, I, I want to give you advice, but you know, but my, I'm part of al-bidah. So my words don't have any weight, you know, because the salaf said, you know, don't listen to them, don't sit by them and the usual. But I've done a video on that anyway, but let's just move on now let's start this particular video and break down his claims and his points academically and this is going to be so embarrassing for him for a layman to you know really dissect his feeble weak arguments and show the audience how they just love to just speak and present their evidences and use technicalities and it's half truths and they mix truth with falsehood it's just common and I'm used to it. I've been doing this for over a year and I'm prior to this as well. I've been, I've had experience with them. So it's nothing, nothing surprises me with these people. It's just on to the next. So after this Abu Hafsa uh, Sufiani, believe me, there'll be someone else that will try to then, you know, be the savior of the day. So all, the, all this is, is just trying to say, oh yeah, well, I've refuted Haji and I've refuted X, Y, and Z. 
you know, it's just for me a show. It, it's got no substance. It's just, you listen to him. He's very, very, you know, uh, brash and very, very abrupt. But let's start the video. Be careful, Ikhwan. Be careful. Jazakumullahu khaira. Be careful. No doubt there is ijma'. Ijma'a consensus. Do you understand? This ijma'. And Imam Bukhari brought this ijma'. Imam al in his book brought this ijma'. Uh, Ibn Hajar brought the ijma'. Uh, Imam al Hajuri brought this ijma'. Imam Ahmed. Every alam that we know of brought the ijma'. Don't bring me some of the mistakes of some of the other ulama or the stories that we've been hearing from the takfir. Do you think this is a new ikhwan? That's what we've been dealing with since the 80s. Since the 80s with the takfiri. I was doing exactly the same thing, the same shubuhat, nothing has changed. Al Hussein Ali uh, Salam, Ibn Zubair, every single shubha is the same, keep repeating itself. And bring me from Ibn Haz, bring me from this. We all know it, don't bother the Ikhwan. As Sheikh Al Islam said, Wala qadis taqarra al amru ba'da dalika ila adami jawazi al khuruji ala al hakim al muslim, walau kala fajir wa dalim ila khiri. The Qamr, the, the Amr, the Hukm has been established after this. We learn from the mistakes. And this guy, he playing the game. I'm not saying we should, but I'm just saying it's okay. No, no, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. Haram, la yajuz. And we talked about this. It's the head of the ulama. When they do mistakes, they have ajar. You remember? We talked about this. Huh? And when he does it's the head, and he got it wrong. So as you heard, he's very very forceful and loud when it comes to this topic of khuruj it's the holy grail like i said last time so he's arguing all right i've been dealing with this since the 80s and they're bringing the same old shubha the ijma'a from imam bukhari from um various scholars um etc etc and he's bringing all sorts of names now just to let you in on a little secret you haven't dealt with me before you are dealing with the takfiris and their emotional arguments, you know, they're, they're just as bad as you. So you're just looking into the mirror and you're dealing with their uh, aggressiveness. But no one's presented the evidences like me before. And you're saying Ibn Hazm, etc. No problem. We'll get to everything. We're going to include everything. This is going to be so inclusive and so comprehensive that even yourself, you're going to be scratching your head thinking, oh no, I messed up. Now what we need to do is, we need to define what ijma'a is. Okay, we need to define what ijma'a is. It's easy saying ijma'a, ijma'a, ijma'a. Okay, like this brother here. So, once we define the ijma'a, then everything that we present, we will then show you, okay then, this is what ijma'a is. Does khuruj or rebellion or the statements of the scholars that they mention fit under this explanation of ijma'a? And then when we present different tabakat and different ulama in different eras, then you say, all right, then, well, the definition of ijma'a is this. You're claiming this doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. So let's now define the ijma'a and then we'll present our case. OK, so it's going to be very, very detailed. So Abu Hafsa, take note, mate. You haven't been dealing with this in the 80s, mate. Let me tell you, this is what you're talking about me. This is why you're mentioning me, because the people are listening. The people are aware. The people understand that bro Haji isn't coming with something old. This is unique. We are going to the we're diving into the books and showing you the different statements of the scholars who agree with us. You've been playing a game for the past two decades. And now the ball's in our court. Okay? The ball's in our court now. So take notes. Stop being arrogant. Stop being stubborn. And just accept what we're saying. Because this is a new wave. In the West, your game's up. Your game's up. And I'm, I'm only getting started as well. Now, as you can see on screen, you've got the book, Rawdatul Nadir. Okay? And this is a book of Usul al-Fiqh by Ibn Qudama al-Hanbali. Okay? Ibn Qudama al-Maqtasi al-Hanbali. And when he defines ijma'a, as you can see on screen, وَمَعْنَ الْإِجْمَعَ فِي الشَّرَعَ The meaning of ijma'a in the sharia. اِتِّفَاقُ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْعَصْرِ مِنْ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ Min umuri din. Ibn Qudama al maqdisi says that the meaning of ijma'a in the Sharia, it is an agreement of all the Muslim scholars in one era. 
after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a matter penetrating to the religious affairs. Ibn Qudama in his Buradatul Nadir mentions that the meaning of Ijma'a in the Sharia it is an agreement of all the Muslim scholars in one era. After the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a matter penetrating to religious affairs. Okay, so we have to now use that as our base. Okay, you have to use that as our base. And I'll bring you another definition as well. Okay, of Ijma'a, okay, from another Hanbali scholar, both Shaykh al-Islams of the Hanbali Madhab, so I've given that away who I'm talking about. If one or two or three scholars differ in that era, okay, in that particular era, as Ibn Qudama says, ittifaq al-ulama al-asr, that it's the agreement of all the scholars in that era. So if there's one or two or three differences, there's no Ijma'a. It invalidates the Ijma'a. Now, as you can see on screen, we have the book al aqidatu Wasatiyya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And he mentions, وَالْإِجْمَعُ الَّذِي يَنْضَبِتُ هُوَ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَفُ الصَّالِحِ He said that the Ijma'a which is to be accepted is that of the righteous Salaf. Why is that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah? إِذْ بَعْدَهُمْ كَثُرَ اخْتِلَافُ وَانْتَشَرَتِ الْأُمَّةِ He says that because after their time, there was a great deal of disagreement and the Ummah spread far and wide. Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi first mentions that the Ijma'a is what is agreed by the Ulama of that Asr, of that particular age, or which is related to matters penetrate into religion. Okay? Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam says that the Ijma'a that is accepted is that of the righteous Salaf. Because after their time, there was a lot of disagreement. Now all we need to do now, okay, all we need to do now is to quote a few scholars from the early Salaf, okay, or from the actions, okay, to prove that the Ijma'a claimed is invalid. Because it has to be ittifaq al-ulama al-asr. And it has to be from the early Salaf, according to Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Qudama says it has to be in agreement with all the ulama of that time. And Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi, says the only Ijma'a which is accepted is the early Salaf, the, 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 the righteous Salaf. Because after their time, there was a lot of differences because the religion spread far and wide. So all we need to do, okay, is to show or present a few individuals that rebelled in their time. Because if the Salaf couldn't agree, okay, if the Salaf rebelled, then there was no Ijma'a. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to present numerous scholars' names with their birth dates and with their date of death. So when I present all those scholars from the different ages, from the different Madahib, you would see... That this claim of Ijma'a, which was presented by some scholars, and just to add, most of those scholars were from the Asha'ira. But we're going to get to that later. We're going to show you their double standards. So they criticize the Asha'ira day and night, day and night. But the main proponents of the Ijma'a, or the main claimants of the Ijma'a, are either from the Asha'ira, Mutakallimun, or weren't Salafi in Aqidah, or weren't Athari in Aqidah. Okay? But we're going to show you that later on. So as you can see on screen, we've got a list of scholars' names, okay? So we're going to break it down briefly, okay? So just bear in mind and keep the dates and the birth, uh, or the birth dates and the death dates um, in your mind. So we've got first Ibn Mujahid al-Ta'i al-Ashari, who died 370. You've got Ibn Abdul Bar, okay? 368 to 463. Ibn Hazm, 384 to 456. Al-Qadi al-Iad, 476 to 544. So you can see they're from Ibn Abdul Bar and Ibn Hazm are from the same era and Ibn Mujahid al-Ta'i al-Ashari. Then you've got Ibn Jawzi, who's from the same era as well. Ibn Imam Nawawi, Ibn Taymiyyah, who are from the same era. Ibn, Ibn Razid, uh, Ibn Aqil, Ibn Muflih, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, and Ibn Wazir al-Yamani al-Mujtahid. Okay? So keep all those names in your head. Keep the birth dates and keep the death dates in your head. I'm going to get to Imam Nawawi's Ijma'ah. We're going to get to Ibn Hajar's Ijma'ah. We're going to get to all of it. We're going to show you that these words are just light on the tongue. It has no substance and there is no valid consensus. People have claimed it, but it's not valid. Not valid at all. The Salaf had no consensus. And this is like my statement that Khuruj or rebelling was the madhab of the early Salaf. Okay? Was their madhab. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi said the ijma that is accepted is the one from the early Salaf. From the Salaf al-Salih. So as you can see on screen, we've got the book Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb by Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. And he mentions, okay, when he's, taught, when he's quoting the biography of 
Al Hassan bin Saleh bin Hay, and I've done a video against Milkshake about that when he tried to distort uh, the biography, but we've we've exposed him as well. He says that he's saying, meaning Al Hassan bin Saleh bin Hay, that he saw the sword, meaning he, he he saw the sword of rebelling, and he saw Khuruj with the sword against the tyrant rulers. And look what Ibn uh, Ibn Hajar al Qalani says, Wahada madhab li Salaf al Qadim. That this was the madhab of the early Salaf. Okay, to rebel against the ruler with the sword, or the tyrant ruler with the sword. Okay, and then Ibn Hajar uh, ends up by saying, but when the matter settled, they left off fighting because of the severity of it. And in it, the battle of Harra happened, Ibn Ashad and other than them. Ibn Hajar al Qalani confirms that rebelling against the ruler with the sword was the madhab of the early Salaf. But they left it off. We agree, we've been forceful and consistent in saying that it's better not to do khuruj. We've been saying this. So now that we've established that there was no ijma'ah from the Salaf, now that we've established that Ibn Qudama, that the ulama al-Asr needs to have ittifaq, let's see now from the different errors whether there was ijma'ah from the different errors. So we've confirmed that the Salaf had no ijma'ah. The Salaf Rabbal, and this is ma'roof. This is ma'roof. Anyone who wants to dispute it is just going to add technicalities. And we've done a video with Hussein Radha Anu. I went into a 56 minute going through all the sources about the rebellion of Hussein Radha Anu. Then I went into the rebellion of Abdullah ibn Zubair in much detail. I think 47 minutes I did of that as well. And I've debunked all your claims on that. So I don't need to go into their specific stories. You go on my playlist and watch it. You'll see it for yourself. The technicalities are as flimsy and as weak as a spoiler's web. So as you can see on screen, Maratibul Ijma'a. And this is by Ibn Hazm of Zahiri. Okay? Now he didn't like Ibn Hazm of Zahiri because he thought, oh, we wanted to debunk this side. Don't worry. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Ibn Hazm's Qawl first because of the, the biography, meaning of how old he, uh, when he was born and when he, was di when he died. And then we're going to show you who else agreed with Ibn Hazm. So you can't say, oh, well, it's Ibn Hazm because if someone agrees exactly near enough word for word with Ibn Hazm of Zahiri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, then what are you going to say then? And then we're going to carry on. It's not going to stop, mate. So Ibn Hazm responded to Ibn uh, Mujahid al-Ta'i al-Ashari, meaning he's an Ashari as well. He said, that doesn't he know that opposing the ijma'a, a person can be rendered a kafir? And he has now presented this to the people. The best of the people, meaning does he not know that the best of the Sahaba anhum, rebelled on the day of Harra? And they rebelled against Yazid ibn Muawiyah and ibn Zubair and those who followed him rebelled, and the best of the Muslims rebelled also. And those who rebelled and fought with them. And, and does he know that Hassan al-Basri and the best of the tabi'een rebelled against Hajjaj with their sword? And he goes, do you see that those people have disbelieved? And whoever says they're disbelieved, we have a right to make takfir. I swear that if this difference of opinion was hidden, meaning that this was basically hidden, one would have excused him, meaning Ibn Mujahid. But he goes, however, this is a known affair which is known by the common people in the markets. That Ibn Mujahid al thai Al-Ashari was, was died 360 years after the Hijrah. Ibn Hazm was born 387 and died 456. So it was his, it was, he was in his era. Now Ibn Hazm is saying that if this difference of opinion was hidden, meaning that those from the ulama of the Salaf differed, there was no ijma'a. He would have excused him if this was a hidden matter. So Ibn Hazm said if this was hidden, meaning if no one knew about it, then we could have excused Ibn Mujahid al Ta'i al-Ashari. But Ibn Hazm said, even the people in the market know that there was no ijma'ah. That the grand, grand Sahaba and the Grand Salaf rebelled against the rulers of their time. So as Ibn Taymiyyah said, the only ijma'ah that's agreed upon is the ijma'ah of the Salaf al-Salaf. There was no ijma'ah from the Salaf al-Salaf. And Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi says that this ijma'ah, meaning the ijma'ah means the consensus of the ulama of that era. But Ibn Hazm disputes the ijma'ah of Ibn Mujahid al tai al-Ashari. So ijma'ah invalidated. In this era, Salaf, you ain't got it. There is no ijma in the Salaf. Now, after the Salaf, you haven't got it as well. Ibn Hazm is uh, refuted. Ibn Mujahid al-Tayyid al-Ashari. Now, you argued about Ibn Hazm. You said Ibn Hazm. You know the arguments of Ibn Hazm. Let's listen. And bring me from Ibn Hazm. Bring me from this. We all know it. Don't bother me, Ikhwan. So you heard, he goes out the, the doubts in the 80s and Ibn Hazm and, you know, uh, you know, we've dealt with this, etc. Now, Ibn Hazm brought various companions that did khuruj, okay, in the Salaf, okay, and he also presented obviously a tabi'un, 
that did Khuruj. So there is no Ijma of the Salaf, my friend. Let's now present a scholar who basically near enough word for word agrees with Ibn Hazm. And they and this scholar is who you look up to very, very much. As you can see on screen, we've got the book Jawab al Sunnah. Okay? And this is by Sheikh Abdullah, the son of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. So this is from the son of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. And he also confirms that the scholar differed with regards to rebelling against an unjust ruler. And there was a group of another group of the companions and those who were after them from the Tabi'un. And then after the, them, the Imams, that they believed to unsheath the sword in enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. Okay? And to remove this uh, munkar. Okay? And he says, whose call is this? He said, this is the call of Ali ibn Abi Talib and who those who were with him from the Sahaba. Like Ammar ibn Yasir, wa ibn Abbas, uh, wa Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, and other than. And then this is the statement of Umm al-Mu'minin Aisha. And this is also from Amr ibn As, Nu'man ibn Bashir, and various other companions. And he also mentions um, Abdurrahman ibn Abi Layla, wa Sa'id ibn Jubair, wa Abi Bukhtari al-Ta'i, wa Ata' al-Sulami, wa al-Hasan al-Basri, wa Sha'bi, and those after them, like uh, Nasik al-Fadil, Abdullah ibn Abdul Aziz, ibn Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, wa Ubaidullah ibn Hafs, bin Asim, wa Sa'ir man kharaja ma'a al-Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Hussain, ibn Hassan, ibn Ali, ibn Abi Talib, wa ma'a akhih Ibrahim ibn Abdullah, wa Hashim, bin Bashir, wa al-Waraq, the son of Muhammad Abdul Wahab also agrees with Ibn Hazm. Okay, so it's not just Ibn Hazm, my friend. So you can't use that argument. Oh, Ibn Hazm, Ibn Hazm. Sheikh Abdullah Ibn Muhammad Abdul Wahab also says. And what's interesting is that there's a, at least an 800 year gap between Ibn Hazm, or probably longer, probably if not, probably 900 years between Ibn Hazm and Sheikh Abdullah Ibn Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab. Rahimahumullah. So there's a big gap and they're repeating the same thing. So where is this Ijma'a, my friend? Now what we're going to do is, we're going to quote another scholar, okay? That basically quotes Ibn Hazm and he quotes another scholar as well. As you can see, in my hand, I've got the book Al-Awasim Wal Qawasim, okay? And as you can see on screen, okay? As you can see on screen, he basically quotes Ibn Hazm, okay? He quotes Ibn Hazm and word for word, literally word for word from uh, Maratib Al-Ijma'a. And Ibn Wazir Al-Imami Al-Mujtahid mentions after quoting what Ibn Hazm mentions, he says, and those, and from amongst those who, who rejected the uh, Ijma'ah of Ibn Mujahid, or the call of Ijma'ah, in this Mas'ala of Khuruj, was Qadi Iyad, okay? Qadi Iyad al-Maliki. And he says, وَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِ بَعْدُهُمْ هَادَكْ بِقِيَامِ الْحُسَيْنِ بِنْ عَلِي رضي الله عنه وَبِنْ زُبَيْرِ وَعَلَى الْمَدِينَةِ عَلَى بِنْ أُمَيَّ وَقِيَامِ جَمَعَةً عَظِيمَةً مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ وصدر الأول على ال Hajjaj ma ibn Ashath. So you see, Qadi Iyad also disputed this ijma'ah from Ibn Mujahid. Now Ibn Mujahid died 370. And Qadi Iyad was born 476 to 544. So that's two errors now. So we confirmed the Salaf did not have no ijma'ah. Means the Sahaba and the Tabi'un regarding this Masala of Khuruj. There was no ijma'ah at that time. Then Ibn Mujahid al Ta'i al Ashari died 370, claimed the ijma'ah. Ibn Hazm debunked him and he died. Oh, he was born 384 to 456. So he was born in that era. Qadi Iyad was born 476 to 554. So in that era, even he goes, some of the people disputed the Ijma'ah that was claimed by Ibn Mujahid. So if there was an Ijma'ah from Imam Bukhari who died like 270 or something, why is there a disputed Ijma'ah? If, if, if Imam Bukhari claimed the Ijma'ah, why would they be disputing the Ijma'ah? Imam Abdul Bar was born 368 and died 463. So he was born in the same era as Ibn Hazm. Ibn Hazm was born 384 and died 456. So they were in the same Asr. Okay, they were in the same era. And what did Ibn Qudama say? As you can see on the screen, that the Ijma is an agreement of all the Muslim scholars in one era after the death of the Prophet ﷺ in a matter penetrating to the affairs of the religion. So you can see we've got two major scholars now in one era. Okay, in one era, Ibn Mujahid al Ta'i al Ashari claimed an Ijma. He claimed it, no doubt about it. We're not disputing that. There was no Ijma, as I just proved. No Ijma from the Salaf. Ibn Taymiyyah said that the Ijma is of the righteous Salaf. They didn't have it. Okay, in this Masala of Khuruj, anyway. So, as you can see, I've got Al Istithqar. Okay, Al Istithqar by Ibn Abdul Bar. And I've just confirmed he, bought, he was born 368, died 463. 
Ibn Mujahid the Ta'i al Ashari died 370. So he was born literally uh, two years before Ibn Mujahid al Ta'i al Ashari died. Okay? So if there's a consensus, there has to be a consensus in that particular era, in agreement in, in that era, in an era. No. Ibn Hazm already debunked it, but you got a problem with Ibn Hazm. So let's bring Abdul Bar. As you can see on screen, okay, Ibn Abdul Bar states as for his statement meaning the beast of Allah do not struggle for power from from those who from the rightful owners and then he said the people differed on that so the people differed some said that it's the rightful uh, ruler with justice goodness and graciousness etc and those are the people you do not struggle with power do not dispute with their power as for those who are oppressive uh, sinful and uh, oppression then do then they do not have right to leadership and the people that brought the evidence now before i present who was that the evidence they brought was the ayat in surah uh, al-baqarah where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i do not make my covenant or do not my covenant does not include the wrongdoers Ibn Abdul Bar says, a group of the Salaf al-Saleh went with this stance and some of the honorable people followed them, including the Qur- uh, Quranic reciters and the scholars from the people of Medina and Iraq. And for this reason, listen, Ibn Zubair and al Hussein rebel against Yazid and the best of the people of Iraq rebel along with their scholars against al Hajjaj and the people of uh, Medina rebel against Bani Umayyah. So, we've just confirmed now, okay, Ibn Abdul Bar in his Al-Istithqar, okay, and Ibn Abdul, uh, Ibn Abdul Bar comments on the uh, hadith Bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sami wa ta'a uh, on the famous hadith of Ubadah bin Samit. So, you can see there, no consensus in that era, no consensus for the Salaf because Ibn Abdul Bar confirms all of them rebelled. Okay, so there's no ijma'ah from the Salaf, and in this era so far, no ijma'ah at all. Let's carry on. We got Al Kami fi Tariq by Ibn Athir. So, to summarize, basically, Imam Malik gave a fatwa to the people in Medina to rebel against uh, Abi Ja'far bin Mansur with Muhammad, uh, Muhammad al Nafs al Zakiya, meaning they were going to rebel with him. And they argued, look, look, we've got the bayah on our necks. And he said, you were forced to give the bayah, and there is no uh, bayah for the one who is coerced. So, there you go Imam Malik, Imam Suhnoon, Salaf. Ibn Hazm, Qadi Iyad. Ibn Mujahid al Ta'i al Ashari's uh, uh, claim to Ijma'a, not valid at all. Not valid at all. Now, what we're going to do is listen to Abu Hafsa. About rebellion and guests. When the brother told him from the mission, he said, There is Ijma'a. And he came, the brother came, he said, What well, is the Ijma'a? I said, There's many books. I said, Okay, one, one. He said, I said, Here is the book of Shaykh al Imam al Nawawi, Sahih Muslim. The guy said, He's lying. The guy, he said, you are lying. I come and see Sayyid Muslim with my own eyes. Now he's a big sheikh to them. He said, I want to see it with my own eyes. He came to the masjid. I said, here's a book. Read it. And he left. He closed the book. He never came back again. The same thing, he would been dealing with them. I advise myself. And the brothers just, yani, don't even answer them, ikhwan. He said, Wallah, ikhwan, don't give them importance. Kill them. Not literally. Yeah? <laughs> Don't think. <laughs> Maybe they will kill us. No. Kill them. I ignore them by not mentioning them. Ignore them by not mentioning them. Is that clear? So as you heard, uh, Abu Hafsa mentioned the uh, Sharh of Imam al and the Ijma'ah. Uh, that was claimed by Imam Nawawi and then he mentioned about you know uh, don't give them any importance etc but for the record uh, my friend you mentioned me you know I don't even know who the hell you are mate you know all I know is you're Neo Haddadiya you know you f- you're in love with SP because you mentioned our brothers from SP meaning SPOB Salafi Publications and then you know you're saying don't give us importance but you're the one that's giving us attention you're the one that's telling your audience about us you mentioned me by name so I think you need to practice what you preach, my brother, because I think you're defeating the objective. You're not supposed to mention me. You're supposed to keep silent. Don't give us any attention. But yeah, you mention us. So it's just a bit strange. Okay, so you mentioned the sh- uh, Ijma'a from Imam al Nawawi. Okay, now what we're going to do now is get the birth dates and the death dates. Okay, so at least then you've got everything that you need. So Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi, okay, was born 631, okay, and died 676. So bear in mind about what Ibn Qudama al-Maqtasi said about the ijma'a that he has to be, a scholars have to have all of agreement in one era after the death of the Prophet sallam, in matters penetrating to the religion. As you can see, I've got the the book Sahih Muslim and this is the Sharah of Imam Nawawi as you can see on screen okay and let's get to it it's in the back page there you go I've got it 
page uh, 185 in my book, uh, Kitab al-Imara, and this is under the hadith or under the sharh, uh, and this particular part, illa an taraw kufran bawahan indakum min Allahi fihi burhan, and he's going to comment on that now. So Imam al-Nawawi says, okay, as for rebelling, okay, against the ruler, and fighting him, it is forbidden by consensus of the Muslims, even if he is sinful and oppressive. I have mentioned many narrations with this meaning. The people of the Sunnah have agreed that the ruler should not be removed due to his sinfulness. As for the view mentioned in the books of jurisprudence, meaning the books of fiqh. So you see here now, this is what I want to get your attention to. He says, That he says, as for what is mentioned in the books of fiqh from some of our commanders, that it should be removed, which is also the opinion of the Mu'tazila. That this is a serious mistake from them and in opposition to the consensus. The scholars have said that the reason for his rebellion or removal and rebellion against him is forbidden because of what would entail of tribulation, bloodshed, corruption, etc. etc. So now what we want to do is if Imam Nawawi always presented Ijma, we've already debunked, okay, the third, the Salaf, the third century or the fourth century, and the fifth century, because Qadi uh, died in the fifth. So Imam Nawawi was in the 7th century, he died 676 and he was born 631. So, what we're going to do now is present a alim, okay, in another era, okay, okay, we're going to present also in this 6th century as well from other leading scholars. But I just want to show you the Shafi'i position of leading imams after him because if there's a consensus claimed by Imam Nawawi, there won't be any ulama after him that will dispute it because there's an ijma'ah. We're going to quote it from his madhab first. Let, let, then we're going to go to other scholars in the same era to show you that but well, they disputed Imam Nawawi as well. Do you understand? Because this Ijma'a is non-existent. They claimed it. It's not binding. So as you can see on screen, we've got the book Mughni Al-Muhtaj by Al-Khatib Al-Sharbini. Now Khatib Al-Sharbini died in 977. So bear in mind, Khatib Al-Sharbini come after roughly about 300 years after Imam Nawawi. So if this Ijma'a was binding, upon the Ummah, then no Imams after would dispute it. There's an Ijma'a. You know, Ijma'a means consensus. So let's see if this Ijma'a was disputed within the own Madhab. Let's see. As you can see on screen, it mentions, and we're going to talk about the Bugat, we're going to talk about that later as well. He says, the rebels are those Muslims who have gone against the head of state, ruler, even if he is oppressive, and the rebe rebels are just according to al qaffal However, Ibn al-Qushayri transmits the majority from the Shafi'iyah, and that is, which is in the great commentary, and al-Rawda, we're going to get to al-Rawda, that they are rebels only if the head of state is just. Bear that in mind. They are only Bugat if the head of state is just. So what does that mean if the head of state is not just? I will let you work it out for yourself. Likewise, this is the criteria mentioned in Um, meaning of Shafi'is, and Al Muqtasar. Uh, and he carries on. And then he said, The evidence that is cited is the statement of the author, Imam Nawawi, in his commentary in Sahih Muslim. Rebelling against the head of state or ruler and fighting them is impermissible according to the consensus of the Muslims. However, this consensus has been disputed by the rebellion of Al Hussein against Yazid, the son of Muawiyah, and Ibn Zubair against Ab Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, and they were both supported by a huge number of the Salaf. Bear that in mind. And some say that this consensus was arrived at after these events. And some others differentiate between rebelling against the head of state ruler who came into power by force as being permissible as opposed to rebelling against the head of state ruler who was sworn into power by peaceful means where it was considered impermissible. So as you just read, okay, that Khatib Shabini, who was 300 years after Imam al-Nawawi says that this Ijma'a was disputed. Why? Because of the Khuruj of the early Salaf. So there is no Ijma'a from the Salaf. Because a Khatib al-Shabini who is 900 years or 600 years after the Salaf says that the ulama differed. And this is from the Shafi'iyah. And then he says, well, some said there was an ijma. So you see this ijma is not binding. Some did say, but it's not a valid ijma. Now what we'll do is we'll present Imam Nawawi in another book, okay, to show you that there's khuruj that is valid, i.e. the Bugat, that obviously Rabaw or those from Al-Haq, as Imam Qudama confirmed in Al-Mughni, there's four different groups, etc. So it's a very nuanced, it's Sahih Muslim, by the way. It's a very nuanced topic, and it's not as black and white. You could shout Ijma'a all day, all night. We're going to break this Ijma'a down to such an extent that I don't think anyone else after you can use this. Because every error is Ittifaqul Ulama Al-Asr. There has to be an agreement of all the Ulama of that age. Well, third, fourth, fifth, we're going to get to sixth in a bit, meaning we're going to get to the Hanabila. 
be patient, be patient. We're going to get to the Hanabila, we're going to show you who else disputed the Ijma'ah. And then Ibn Taymiyyah's statements, Mawal Adim, it's crazy. I've got here, Rodu to Talibin by Imam al Nawawi. He says, first, the description, Al Baghi fi istalah al Ulama. That the Baghi, according to the terminology of the ulama, who al Mukhalif al Imam al Adil, Imam Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi, says that the Baghi, the one that rebels, is the one that rebels against a just ruler. Did he call him a Khariji? No, he called him a Baghi. So you're only a Baghi if you rebel against a just ruler. So if you don't rebel against a just, um, so if you rebel against an unjust ruler, what does that make you? And my video, tyrant ruler and just ruler, or tyrant ruler versus just ruler, would explain that in detail as well. So don't worry. All avenues are covered. Wallah al-Azim, it's just a shame that you guys are still persistent and arrogant and stubborn and hard-headed and box-headed on this masala. Just accept what I'm saying. Ibn Taymiyyah died 728, born 661. Ibn Aqil, 694, 769. So you can see Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Aqil both lived in the same era. Then you got Ibn Muflih, who died uh, 763, was born 708. And you got Al-Mardawi Al-Hanbali, born 817, died 885. Okay, what we're going to do now Okay, we're going to present a statement from Al Mardawi Al Hanbali, who died when? 885. Okay, and as you can see on screen, he mentions in his book Al Insaf, Fi Masail Al Khilaf, he mentions that Ibn Aqil, meaning 694 to 769, born in the same era as Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Jawzi, 510 to 597 permitted rebelling or revolting against an unjust imam and they both mentioned Hussein's rebelling or revolting against Yazid for establishing the truth and this is the apparent statement of Ibn Razin who died 656 based on what was apparent Ibn Jawzi died 597 he died in the 6th century okay and he permitted rebelling against an unjust ruler no ijma okay no ijma Ibn Aqil born in the same era of Ibn Taymiyyah he permitted it so now we're going to get to Ibn Taymiyyah's statement, okay? Well, now we're going to get to Ibn Taymiyyah's statement in his Minhaj as Sunnah, which he was quoting. Let's listen to him. As Sheikh al Islam said, وَلَقَدْ اسْتَقَرَّ الْأَمْرُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ إِلَى عَدَمِ جَوَازِ الْخُرُوجِ عَلَى الْحَاكِمِ الْمُسْلِمِ وَلَوْ كَانَ فَاجِرٍ وَظَالِمٍ إِلَى آخِرِهِ the Qamr, the, the Amr, the Hukm has been established after this. We learn from the mistakes. This guy, he playing the game. I'm not saying we should, but I'm just saying it's okay. No, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. Haram, la yajuz. And we talked about this. It's the hand of the ulama. When they do mistakes, they have ajr. You remember? We talked about this. Huh? And Alam, when he does his jihad, and he got it wrong. You heard the brother quote the statement or the passage that he memorized. So let's go into the statement that he was actually quoting and just look into it. So as you can see, okay, so he mentions that the, after the matter was settled and al Sunnah wal Jama'ah left off fighting in fitna according to the hadith that is uh, affirmed, authentic hadith that have been affirmed from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they mentioned this in their books of creed and they um, ordered that patience, look at this, patience against a tyrant ruler uh, and leave off fighting even though in the fitna, there was a huge number of people that fought in the fitna. Okay, so that's what Ibn Taymiyyah mentions. al Mardawi al-Hanbali, who was 200 years after, mentions that Ibn Jawzi, who was before Ibn Taymiyyah, mentioned that he permitted rebelling against unjust ruler. Ibn Aqil, who was in the same era as Ibn Taymiyyah, permitted it. So Ibn Taymiyyah's Ijma'ah, which it, it doesn't mention Ijma'ah. Ibn Taymiyyah doesn't mention Ijma'ah. He just says, leave off the fighting in time, you know, as far as patience and etc. Uh, et is concerned. So now let's move on. Hanbali scholars. Ibn Muflah, he was born 708 and died 763. Ibn Muflah, in his book Kitab al-Furu'a, he mentions the exact sta same statement of Al-Mardawi Al-Hanbali, exactly word for word, as you can see on screen. Okay, so Ibn Muflah also added this in his book uh, Kitab al-Furu'a. So major scholars in the Hanbali school of thought also disputed this ijma'ah. So this ijma'ah, again, as Ibn Qudama, and we keep mentioning these things so it sticks in your head, Ibn Qudama al he said that it has to be a consensus of all the ulama in an era after the death of the Prophet ﷺ in matters penetrating to religion. As you can see, there is no ijma'ah because even from amongst the madhab itself, from the madhab itself, they're disputing. They say, yeah, you can rebel against a ruler. So, you see? As you can see on screen also, we got the book, Shadaratul Dahab by Ibn Ahmad al-Din al-Hanbali. And he also mentions that the majority of the ulama permitted rebelling against uh, someone similar to Yazid and Hajjaj and from amongst them 
who permitted rebelling against a Valim. Uh, Ibn Hazm said four, uh, what's he called, uh, uh, events had a dent in Islam. I mentioned Uthman's death, Hussein Radha'anu's death, the Battle of Harra, the killing of Zubair. So he died, Ibn, Ibn Imad al-Hanbali, he died 1089. And Ibn Taymiyyah died 728. So you can see Ibn Mardawi al-Hanbali died 885. Uh, Ibn Muflid died 763, which is after Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Aqil died 769, and Ibn Imad al Hanbali died 1083. Where's the consensus? And Ibn Jawzi before that, he was 6th century. Ibn Imad al Hanbali, 11th century, 1083. So where's the Ijma'a? So we've already covered 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and now we've covered 9, Mardawi, 9th century Hijri, and now we've covered 11th century Hijri. So we're going to get to 9 in a bit with Ibn Wazir. Now what we're going to do is Ibn, present Ibn Taymiyyah's position regarding Al-Bughat. Because now what we want to do is, Ibn Taymiyyah says leave off the fighting, but he also accepted that there's a principle in Islam or a position regarding fighting against an unjust ruler where obviously they were dividing into different categories. So let's now present Ibn Taymiyyah's Kalam. As you can see on screen, we've got the book Majmu' Al-Fatawa. And then Ibn Taymiyyah mentions this to summarize, he mentions that the majority of the scholars made a differentiation between the Khawarij, al mariqin and the people of Safin and Jamal, etc. And then he says, that as for the Bughat, that this is known amongst the Sahaba uh, and, the, uh, and the majority of the Al Hadith and the Fuqaha and the Mutakallimin and those who, with uh, text from our Imams and those who follow them from the Malik, uh, from the companions of Malik, Ahmed and Shafi and others. Ibn Taymiyyah also, when he says leave off the fighting, he also accepted that this is known that the ulama, those who did rebel, okay, when they did, when they had the means, because this is a Masail of the Niyah for Ru'iyahs, Ibn Wazir al Yamani Mushtaid, which we'll get to later. He confirmed this is from the subsidiary matters. This is from the Messiah of the Nia, speculative matters. It's not from Aqidah. That I've been saying for the past 13 to 14 months over a year that it's better not to do khuruj. Don't do it. I'm saying don't do it. But anyone who does, who feels they've got the mean, I'm not going to label them as khawarij. It's unjust. La you Jews. And there's no way you could disparage Muslims. And you've been doing this for the past 20 years. Now we're showing you this ijma'ah is absolutely flawed. Whilst people have claimed it. But it shows it's not a binding ijma'ah. It's not a valid ijma'ah. And we're of the opinion it's better not to do khuruj. And we're saying be patient with our rulers. But we don't climatize to it. We don't, you know, endorse or uh, justify or even ignore oppression. The Muslim is not programmed like that. Okay, let's carry on. Now, we'll get to the Ijma'a claim by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Okay, we're going to get to the Ijma'a claim by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. And Ibn Hajar was born in the year 773. Okay, died 852. Qatib al-Shadbini died in 977. Okay, so now there's a gap of 100 years from the time of Qatib al-Shadbini to Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Okay. So there's a hundred years gap. So Ibn, Ibn uh, Khatib al-Shabini was also from the Shafi'iyah. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani is also from the Shafi'iyah. You can see that Khatib al-Shabini said, this ijma'ah is disputed. This ijma'ah is disputed. Okay? It's not a valid ijma'ah. Some did claim it, but it's not valid. It's not binding. Now, Moshek in his article on the page three says that the author, look at this, the author, he doesn't mention the author's name of the book, Mirqatul Mafatih. Under the book that I just mentioned, cites from Ibn Hajar, and he quotes Ibn Hajar, okay? Uh, Ibn Hajar said, within, within the text is the permissibility of the situation where the ruler is sinful and oppressive, and that he is not to be removed due to sin or oppression, and is obligatory to obey him so long as he doesn't command with sin, and as for the revolt of a group of the Salaf against the oppressive leaders, that was before the Ijma'ah, over the unlawfulness of revolting against the tyrant ruler, okay? So he quotes that from that book that I just mentioned. So, I like to ask Milshaik, okay, and the SP cult, why didn't Milshaik mention the author's name, okay? He just said the author, and from that book, and then he claimed the Ijma'ah from Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Who was the author of this book? The majority of those who claim the Ijma'ah are either from the Asha'ira, Mutakallim, or was uh, basically Mujtahid, but wasn't an Athari in Creed, like Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. The author of this book is Mullah Ali Qari. Mullah Ali Qari. He quotes this from Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Now, I don't think, and I haven't seen a quote from Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his own book state this. I haven't seen this. So it's interesting to find out where Mullah Ali Qari got this from. But nevertheless, why didn't you, Milshaykh, make mention that the author was Mullah Ali Qari? Okay? Why did you say the author of the book? You should have just told us his name. Because you said Imam Nawawi in his shah, okay? But you just said the author. 
So why were you ashamed to mention Mullah Ali Qari's name? Ibn Mujahid al-Ta'i al-Ashari, Mutakallim. And if you read Sharim uh, of, his, uh, of Imam Muslim, he, cl- he mentions many times, Immatuna wa Immatana, but are Imams from the, uh, the people of Kalam. Okay, him. Now Ibn Hajar, who were a Salafi or Athari in Creed, yet you call him. So you see how you, your principles go. When it comes to Khuruj, oh, it's okay to call an Ashari. It's okay to call a Mutakallim. If Hajar wasn't a Salafi or an Athari, you say, yeah, but he wasn't an Ashari. But he wasn't an Athari. Regardless, you know, he doesn't adhere to the principles of the Sha'ara. Maybe not, but he wasn't an Athari. So here's a quote on screen, okay, from Ibn Mullah Ali Qari. Okay, here's a quote. I've got it on, on here. Okay. So what we can gather from this is that Khatib al Shabini is from the Shafi'iyah. Imam Nawawi is from the Shafi'iyah. It seems that Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani followed Imam Nawawi's ijma. So you got to bear in mind as well that Khatib al-Shirbini came 100 years roughly after Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Imam Nawawi died 680 uh, something. So you got 7th century, Ibn Hajar died in the 8th century, and now you got Khatib al-Shirbini, who was one of the major Imams of the Shafi'iyah. He was 9th century, he died 977, 10th century. So if there was an ijma'a claimed by Ibn Hajar, why is Khatib al-Shirbini disputing the ijma'a? Because he's after Ibn Hajar al-Sqalani. So if there was an ijma'a claim by Ibn Hajar, why is Khatib al-Shirbini disputing it? And what did uh, Imam Ibn Qudama said? That he has to be ittifaq al-ulama al-asr. There is no ittifaq. There is no consensus. There is no agreement for this ijma'a. This is Abu Hafsa. Al-Hakim is written from Usu Ahl sunnah Likewise, Mas'ah al-Khafain. Then it means from not from Aqidah. Look, if somebody says something like that, Wallahi khad. Other is a jahil. Jahil al Jahl, or he's a mad person, he's not, he's not Majnoon, هذا الرجل. لماذا? شوفي يا إخوان. هذا الدليل عليه وليس له. This is this دليل. It's against him, not for him. Why? Because when أهل العلم put the creed of أهل السنة, the usul, the foundation, they put the مسعى الخفين. Why? Because the difference between who? Between أهل السنة and الشيعة, which the مبتلعة, the Shia don't wipe on the socks. We do wipe on the socks. There is no Sunni in mind that doesn't do this. So when you do, do not believe in Mas'al Khafain, you are like the Shia. Doesn't mean you're a Mubtadi. You're a Jahan, you're a Limuk. But it means this is not the creed of Ahl Sunnah. Likewise, Al Khuruj Al Al Hakimi is the same thing. I, from the attribute, I'm the foundation. Of Ahl Sunnah that they don't rebel. That's why Ahl al put this in their books as Book Al Aqaid one after another. And it can, يعني هذا الإجماع كان طبقة عن طبقة to prove this is the way of the Salaf. Doesn't mean all oh, these others who are not. Yeah, there's people that made mistakes. They made mistakes. غفر الله له. So as you heard, uh, Abu Hafsa getting really, really. Uh, animated and getting really passionate you don't need to calm down son take it easy relax he mentioned about you know uh the leather socks etc i've done a video on it already and uh, i don't think he watches you know he's arguing uh the shia don't do this even if the shia don't do it it doesn't make it creed regardless if the shia don't do it regardless if the jahmiya don't do it regardless if the qadariya don't do it regardless of whoever doesn't do it it doesn't make it creed even if they put it in their creed books it was a characteristic it was a khisal i agreed i did a video on it just like the couple of weeks ago so you need to get with the time son you need to get with the program you understand you need to subscribe to bro haji and you need to click the bell notifications and you need to watch my videos mate why not the leather socks was written in the books of creed because of the khisal okay because uh, the sunnah wipe over the leather socks shia don't so what so if the shia don't do it doesn't make it creed so what the shia don't do it and what does it make it creed of course not it's still fiqh but it plays in the book of creed because of the khisal and it, because of a characteristic just because it's in there doesn't mean it's creed likewise uh, Imam uh, Al Muzani, the student of Imam Shafi, he put uh, c- uh, combining the prayers, sorry, shortening the prayers when traveling uh, in the books of Creed. What does that mean? Now, th- does that mean it's Creed now? Of course it doesn't. It's just a khisal. Likewise, Taraweeh was placed in the book of Fiqh al Akbar of Imam Abu Hanifa. Is Taraweeh Creed? The Shia don't pray. We, we know that. The Shia reject it. They believe it's an uh, innovation from Umar bin Khattab. Obviously, they're, they're wrong. The Prophet doesn't pray it, you know, in the famous hadith of Sahih Muslim. But even if it's in the books of creed because it's arguing against the Shia. And what? Still doesn't make it creed. Even though it's opposing the Shia. Still doesn't make it creed, my friend. Regardless. Even if it's placed there to argue against the Shia, the Qadariya, the Jahmiya. Regardless. Wiping over the leather socks. Traveling or shortening the prayers while traveling. The, the, the Taraweeh is not creed. It's fiqh. 
So, like Khuruj is placed in the books of Creed, doesn't make it Creed. It was just a response to Al Khawarij. Doesn't make it Creed, mate. I hate to break it to you, mate. I know. It's a bit upsetting, isn't it? But it is what it is. Let's listen to him now and you try to understand what he's saying because I didn't have a clue when I was listening to this. Ibn Kuman says, there's not a single person, ruler, that everybody is going to agree upon. How? Because the Ummah is split in 73 sect. So this Hakim could be one of those sect. So if it's from uh, the Ikhwani or from, from whatever, let's say from the Dubandis, then the rest will not be happy with him. If from Salafi, the rest will not be happy with him. That's a fact, eh, Juan. Common sense, you guys, you said talk about common sense. What is your common sense? Then nobody would be happy with any ruler. All right, so you're talking about common sense. Okay, so let's, let's understand how much sense this man has. Okay. So it's, look, you notice, and I, and I need to raise this as a point as well. You notice their foundation is tafarruq. Their foundation is about split. You notice, there's 73 sects, and the, uh, not everyone's going to be happy with the ruler, and that ruler has to be from the 73 sects. Relax, some rulers that don't care which sect they're from, they're outright staunch secularists. They're not even bloody part of what you would call a sect. They're either secularists, Marxists, capitalists. So what the hell are you going on about, mate? You're just talking nonsense. You're talking rubbish. So stop your nonsense, mate. Stop your foolish remarks because you're talking, oh, the Sufi won't be able to, the Obandi won't be able to. Just fuck it out. Just relax. You know, relax, my friend. All right? Take it from your brother Haji. He's chilled out. He's made mistakes in the past. He's been aggressive. He's been, you know, very rude, etc. Take it easy. Don't ever talk about people's mothers. You were nappy. When I earned this book, your mom was getting, will put your nappies. Come on. Come on, son. It's not right. It's not right at all to speak like that. Another thing as well, I've got Shara Sunnah by Imam Barbahari, uh, the Talmud of the Madkalis, and this is the Shara of uh, Sheikh Al Fawzan. So there's something interesting in here as well that uh, it's going to be a refutation to the Madakhira as well. You haven't had this heat before, have you? You haven't had this pressure. And uh, it's good. It's good to see that the, the cult is being uh, put on the back foot. Look after yourselves. Make dua for me. Muhammad.